Thanks for joining us, Thomas Kissinger, and we are back to go through Read and Search, Part 26, reading through the book of Dr. Harold Lovelace, Read and Search, God's Plan. And as I begin this teaching, I'm reminded of the testimony of Hannah Whittall Smith. If you haven't ever read this or looked at her testimony, it is amazing. God really just gave her a revelation of the salvation of all men through Jesus Christ. And she had wondered about it her whole life and really lived in misery uh, for a good bit of her life because she just wondered how could an all-powerful, all-loving, almighty God lose the vast majority of the creation. But God revealed it to her. And when God revealed it to her, the amazing thing is the day that it happened, as soon as she got home, she ran to her Bible, opened it up to see maybe has this been there all along and I just never saw it. And these are the words of what she was talking about when she got home that day. I hurried home to get hold of my Bible to see if the magnificent fact I had discovered could possibly have been all this time in the Bible. And I had not seen it. And the moment I entered the house, I did not wait to take my bonnet off. Now that's somebody who's in a hurry if you don't take your bonnet off. But rushed at once to the table where I always kept my Bible and concordance ready for use and began my search. Immediately the whole book seemed to be illuminated. See, that's what the Spirit of God does, ladies and gentlemen. Illuminates His Word to us. On every page, the truth concerning the times of restitution of all things, of which the Apostle Peter says, God hath spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began, shone forth, and no room was left for questioning. I turned greedily from page to page of my Bible, fairly laughing aloud for joy, at the blaze of light that illuminated it all. It became a new book. Another skin seemed to have been peeled off every text. And my Bible fairly shone with a new meaning. I do not say with a different meaning. For in no sense did the new meaning contradict the old, but a deeper meaning, the true meaning, hidden behind the outward form of words. The words did not need to be changed. They only needed to be understood. And now at last, I began to understand them. Do you get that? She said, the words did not need to be changed. They only needed to be understood. And now at last, I began to understand them. Many people read the Bible. They quote the Bible. But they really don't understand what they're talking about most of the time. And they don't understand the spirit of the word. They don't understand the character and nature of God. They just quote from the Bible and just try to literalize every little thing that they quote and don't really get into the spirit and meaning of it. And then, of course, a lot of people don't look up words in the Hebrew and the Greek to see where these English words came from and what they really mean. But I just wanted to share that with us as we get into uh, Harold Lovelace's uh, scripture section again in Read and Search God's Plan because that's what you have to understand. As I say so many times, you need to pray that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that He would illuminate you, that as you read His Word, that He would give you His Holy Spirit, that He would breathe upon it so that you can grasp it. You say, well, we don't need that. Well, yes, we do. And why did Paul pray for the church at Ephesus that they would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him? Yes, you need it. You need to pray that God would illuminate who He is to you, that He would reveal what the Scriptures really mean and what His plan is all about. So as we jump back into some of these Scriptures where we left off, um, let's see here, Colossians 3.11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is all and in all? Just meditate on that. Christ is all and in all. It's not about titles anymore. It's not about races, different races anymore. There's only, there's only one race, you know, that God is going to have you enter into, and that is the race of the sons and daughters of God. Let's see what else we have here. 
1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am chief. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now Christ came here to save sinners. Did He succeed in His mission or did He fail? I say that He succeeded. Well, so many people say, well, man has a will. Yes, man has a will. What's more powerful, the effort of the Lord Jesus Christ to save us or our will to resist His effort? It is that Jesus Christ is more powerful in His effort to save us. He has done it and it will be played out in the fullness of time. Let's see what other scriptures we have. 1 Timothy 4.10 This is a very powerful one here. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach, Paul said. Paul said for us to command and teach that God is the Savior of all men. Now I know it says especially those that believe, but what that's saying there is that the believers are really the first fruits, the special ones that come to God first. But ultimately, God is still the Savior of all men. If I give you an example, uh, if I'm speaking to a room full of people, and some are musicians and some are not, and I say, hey, all of us in this room tonight, we're going to go to a music concert, and all of you will enjoy the music concert, especially those of you that are musicians. Well, what am I saying? Only the musicians are going to enjoy the music concert? No, I'm saying everyone's going to enjoy it, but it's going to be a little bit more special to the musicians. Well, God is going to save everyone, and God is the Savior of all men, but it's even going to be more special for those who believe now and enter in and press into the kingdom of God now because we become a part of the first fruits, the sons and daughters of God, and we have an opportunity to be a part of the first resurrection. Let's see what else we can read here. What other scriptures can we finish with? 1 John 2.2 2. Thank you for bearing with me there. 1 John 2.2 2. And He is the atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So He's the atonement for the believers, and He's also the atonement for the sins of the whole world. That's what God's about. God's about including everyone through the Lord Jesus Christ. God is about being the Savior of the world. God is about being all in all. And I love this one here, 1 John 4, 14. It's such a simple statement, but it just, just take it at face value and take it for what it's saying. 1 John 4, 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. I mean, how simple is that? How to the point is that? But yet, how amazing and profound is that? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. He's not the Savior of some of the world. He's the Savior of the world. He's a ransom for all to be testified in due time. I love that. The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Did He succeed? Of course He did. And we'll just finish up maybe with uh, this one from Revelation, which I always love this one here. Revelation 5.13 And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. How many creatures are going to be praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord. What did it say? Every creature. There's nothing left out. There's no one left out. Every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power 
be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Every creature. Thank you, Jesus.